Does the idea of AI just scream Skynet and the end of the world, does that kind of thing keep you up at night? If that's the case, you might want to proceed with caution because I play D&D with ChatGPT and I'm going to tell you all about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to J&J Tabletop. I'm the real Josh T, and if you're like me, you can't escape conversations about AI and ChatGPT. It's all over Twitter, it's all over the news. People at work always want to talk about it. And I guess you can't escape it here either because it kind of piqued my interest. So I downloaded, I think it's called Genie. It's just an app for ChatGPT. And it's, I, I don't know, I really don't know anything about AI. That's not my forte at all. So if you want to teach me about it, let me know in the comments, that's fine. But uh, downloaded an app, started asking it some questions. I wanted it to write a, a James Bond movie for me and a couple scripts just for fun, just messing around. And I got some cool responses. And then I was like, I wonder if I could play D&D with this. So I asked and it said yes. A lot of this video is going to be, I'm just going to read what happened. I'm going to read the DM or, or the AI's perspective. And then I'm going to read my responses and, and you're going to find out what happened. And um, I'll, I'll, try to, I'll try to use voices when applicable and, and make it fun. But I understand that some people don't care about the specifics of the game. So if you just want to hear my response, check out the timestamp below and I'll talk about it at the end and, and kind of give my opinion of the game. And you know, if you really can play D&D with chat GPT, we'll, we'll find out. So if you want to hear my thoughts and only my thoughts, skip to that. And if you want to hear the whole game, well, just listen up because that's what we're about to do. Can I play D&D with you? Yes, I can help you play a simplified version of Dungeons and Dragons by acting as the Dungeon Master. To get started, please provide me some basic character information, such as race, class, and a brief back. I assume backstory is what they wanted. So if you know me, you probably know what I'm about to say. My character is Jaron Ward a wood elf ranger of the Eastern Tribes. Jaren's dexterity is like none other. He's accurate and deadly with a bow as well as twin tomahawks. He's quick-witted and charismatic. Jaren has protected his forest from bandits, fey, aberrations, and whatever other monstrosities have threatened it. An oracle recently gave him charge to leave his home and fulfill his destiny. Welcome Jaren Ward, the wood elf ranger from the Eastern Tribes. Your exceptional dexterity and expertise with a bow and twin tomahawks have earned you great respect among your people. Your quick wit and charisma have made you a natural leader. You have long protected your forest from various threats, and now, heeding the Oracle's prophecy, you embark on a quest to fulfill your destiny. As you travel through the dense forest, you come across a small village plagued by a series of mysterious disappearances. The village elder approaches you and pleads for your help in finding the missing villagers. What would you like to do? I would like to ask the elder, as well as the people around the village, about the disappearances. You approach the village elder and express your interest in learning more about the mysterious disappearances. The elder shares that over the past few weeks, several villagers have vanished without a trace. There is no pattern to the disappearances. They have affected people of all ages and backgrounds. The villagers are frightened and have started to believe that a dark force may be at work. You decide to gather more information by talking to other villagers. They share similar stories, and some mention an eerie, unearthly howling coming from the nearby hills at night. A few villagers claim to have seen shadows lurking on the outskirts of the village. As you gather this information, the sun begins to set, and the village is cast in an uneasy twilight. What would you like to do next? I accept the Elder's quest and agree to investigate the disappearances. I set up a position to hide and to seek out suspicious activity. You accept the Elder's request and prepare to investigate the mysterious disappearances. To catch any suspicious activity, you find a suitable hiding spot with a clear view of the village and its surroundings. You blend into the shadows, your keen senses alert and ready to pick up any signs of movement or danger. As the night deepens, the village falls into an uneasy silence, interrupted only by the occasional howling from the nearby hills. Hours pass, and just as you begin to think that nothing will happen, you notice a flicker of movement in the shadows. 
a figure barely discernible in the darkness, is moving stealthily on the outskirts of the village. What would you like to do? I observe the creature from my hiding spot, bow at the ready. You remain in your hiding spot, carefully observing the shadowy figure as it moves about the outskirts of the village. With your bow at the ready, you stay vigilant for any sign of danger. The figure appears to be searching for something, moving cautiously between the houses. After a few minutes, the figure stops and seems to have found what it was looking for. It approaches a house, and you notice that it's the home of one of the villagers who spoke to you earlier about the howling. The figure begins to fiddle with the door, and it seems as if they are trying to break in. What would you like to do? I continue to observe to see what happens next. I would like to find out if this creature lives here, or if they are merely looking for the next victim. You decide to continue observing the figure to gather more information about their intentions. The figure skillfully picks the lock and slips into the house, leaving the door slightly ajar. The silence is almost palpable as you wait, trying to anticipate the figure's next move. After several minutes, the figure emerges from the house, carrying a small, struggling bundle. It's clear that the figure has taken someone from the house, presumably one of the villagers. The figure moves quickly, heading in the direction of the hills where the eerie howling originates. What would you like to do? I want to follow the figure and find out where it has been taking the villagers. Keeping a safe distance, you follow the shadowy figure as it carries the struggling bundle towards the hills. The howling grows louder as you make your way through the dark forest, guided by your keen senses and ranger instincts. The figure seems unaware of your presence, focused on its destination. After some time, you arrive at the entrance of a hidden cave. The figure enters the cave and the howling stops abruptly. The cave entrance is narrow and seems to lead deeper into the hillside. What would you like to do? I will continue sneaking and following the creature relying on my natural dark vision and stealth. Relying on your natural dark vision and stealth abilities, you cautiously enter the cave, taking care to make as little noise as possible. The cave narrows into a tunnel, which then opens into a larger chamber. The walls are covered in strange glowing runes, and the air is heavy with an unsettling energy. In the center of the chamber, you see the figure you've been following. It is a hooded figure performing some sort of ritual, surrounded by several other cloaked individuals. The captured villager is bound and unconscious on a stone altar. The howling has stopped, replaced by the low chanting of the hooded figures. What would you like to do? Is there anything else in the room that I think might make a good distraction? As you scan the chamber, you notice a few things that could potentially serve as distractions. One, a pile of bones and debris in a corner of the room. You could make noise to attract the attention of the hooded figures. 2. Several unlit torches hanging on the wall. You could try lighting one and tossing it into the chamber to create a sudden burst of light and confusion. 3. A cluster of stalactites hanging from the ceiling. If you could shoot one down, it may create enough of a distraction for you to act. What would you like to do? I attempt to shoot down a stalactite. You take careful aim at one of the larger stalactites hanging from the ceiling. With your exceptional dexterity and accuracy, you release an arrow, striking the stalactite and causing it to break free. It crashes to the ground with a resounding thud, shattering into pieces. The hooded figures are startled by the sudden noise and disruption. Their chanting ceases, and they look around in confusion, trying to identify the source of the disturbance. This has created an opportunity for you to act. What would you like to do? How many hooded figures are there? There are a total of five hooded figures in the chamber including the one you've been following. They appear to be disoriented by the sudden disturbance, but they will likely regain their composure soon. What would you like to do? Use the confusion to sneak closer and free the villager. Using the confusion to your advantage, you stealthily approach the altar where the captured villager is bound. The hooded figures are still preoccupied with the unexpected disturbance, allowing you to reach the villager undetected. Quickly and quietly, you untie the villager and help them to their feet. You signal for them to stay close and silent as you plan your next move. What would you like to do? I attempt to sneak out of the chamber with the villager, ready to attack with my bow if the hooded figures spot us. With the villager in tow, you carefully and quietly make your way to the back towards the entrance of the chamber. 
You move with deliberate stealth, keeping an eye on the hooded figures while remaining ready to defend yourself and the villager with your bow if necessary. Fortunately, the hooded figures are still preoccupied with the disturbance and have not noticed your actions. You successfully reach the tunnel leading out of the chamber and continue moving cautiously, ensuring that you and the villager remain undetected. Once you're a safe distance from the chamber, you and the rescued villager pick up the pace and make your way back to the village. Upon your arrival, the villagers rejoice at the return of their missing friend and praise your bravery and skills. The village elder, grateful for your help, offers you a reward for your efforts and insists that you stay and rest before continuing your journey. What would you like to do? Before I accept the reward, I would like to assemble a group of three to five capable bowmen. Ideally, this group would be made up of those men and women of the village who regularly use a bow to hunt game. Once I've assembled this group, we will return to the cave where I found the hooded figures. The group of hunters will take positions with their bows hiding among the trees outside the cave, and I will go in by myself to assess the situation. The village elder agrees to help you assemble a group of skilled archers from the village. After some discussion, you gather a team of four capable bowmen, all experienced hunters familiar with the surrounding terrain. With your newly formed group, you return to the cave prepared to face the hooded figures. The hunters take up concealed positions among the trees outside the cave, their bows at the ready. They will provide backup and cover fire if needed. You cautiously enter the cave once again, moving silently through the tunnel and towards the chamber where the ritual was taking place. As you reach the chamber, you assess the situation. What would you like to do? I would like to observe the area to see if the hooded figures are still there and what they are doing. You carefully peer into the chamber taking care not to reveal your presence. The hooded figures are still there, but they appear agitated and disorganized. The ritual has not resumed, and it seems the disturbance you created earlier has disrupted their plans. The figures are gathered in a group, conversing in hushed tones. You can't make out the details of their conversation, but it's clear they're trying to figure out what happened and how to proceed. What would you like to do? I exclaim, hello there, from my position in the tunnel. With my bow trained on them, I'll continue on and say, You seem to have misplaced something. What manner of ritual were you trying to perform on that villager? If the hooded figures try to attack me, I will shoot one of them with my bow and run as fast as I can out of the tunnel. You confidently call out, Hello there, from your position in the tunnel. <laughs> uh, it's funny, it, it kind of repeats everything back to you, but we'll, we'll speed through it. They seem startled at the sound of your voice, and you continue. You seem to have misplaced something. What manner of ritual were you trying to perform on that villager? The hooded figures, realizing they are at a disadvantage, hesitate before one of them speaks up. Our intentions are none of your concern, outsider. Leave this place at once, or face the consequences. As the tension in the chamber rises, you maintain your stance, bow at the ready. Just as you're about to respond, one of the hooded figures makes a sudden aggressive move towards you. You react instinctively, releasing an arrow that finds its mark, causing the figure to crumple to the ground. Seizing the opportunity, you sprint back towards the tunnel entrance, knowing that your team of archers is waiting outside to provide cover. What would you like to do? I instruct my archers to wait in their positions and shoot the hooded figures when they leave the tunnel. I let them know I want one left alive to capture in question. You quickly relay your plan to the team of archers, instructing them to stay in their concealed positions and shoot the hooded figures when they emerge from the tunnel. You emphasize the importance of leaving one of them alive for questioning. The archers nod in understanding and prepare their bows, waiting for the right moment to strike. As the hooded figures pursue you out of the tunnel, the archers release a volley of arrows, catching two of the hooded figures off guard. Two of them fall to the ground, wounded or dead. The remaining two figures hesitate. Realizing they are outmatched, one of them attempts to flee back into the cave while the other raises their hands in surrender. What would you like to do? I instruct the archers to tie up the surrendered hooded figure while I run into the tunnel chasing after the fleeing figure. You quickly instruct the archers to secure the surrendering hooded figure, ensuring that they are tied up and unable to cause any further harm. With that task delegated, you sprint back into the tunnel in pursuit of the fleeing figure. Your ranger instincts and natural speed allow you to close the distance quickly. The hooded figure glances back, fear evident in their eyes as they realize they cannot outrun you. 
They stumble, tripping over a rock, and fall to the ground. What would you like to do? I notch back an arrow and point it at them and yell, Who are you and what are you doing here? With an arrow notched back and aimed at the fallen figure, you demand, Who are you and what are you doing here? Visibly frightened and aware of their vulnerable position, the figure stammers, We are part of a secret cult, worshipping an ancient being of great power. We were performing a ritual to gain favor and strength from our master. But I beg you, please spare my life. I will tell you everything and help you stop the others. The hooded figure seems willing to cooperate, though it's unclear if they could be fully trusted. The choice of how to proceed is in your hands. I say, you're in no position to make demands. Tell me everything and I will consider sparing your life. The hooded figure, realizing their desperate situation, nods in agreement. They begin to divulge information about the cult, their ritual, and their motivations. We worship an ancient being known as Zel Cathar, a powerful entity that has been dormant for centuries. Our cult believes that by performing specific rituals, we can awaken Zel Cathar and gain immense power. The ritual you interrupted was a blood sacrifice meant to appease and energize our master. We've been kidnapping villagers for some time, but we never intended to harm the village as a whole. The hooded figure appears to be telling the truth, though their motives and morals are undoubtedly twisted. With this new information, you must decide how to proceed. I attempt to recall any information I've heard about this being, Zel Cathar. You rack your memory for information you've come across regarding Zel Cathar. As a well-traveled ranger, you've heard many tales and legends, but the name Zel Cathar is unfamiliar to you. It's possible that the entity they're worshiping is an obscure or forgotten deity or perhaps even a powerful creature that the cult has elevated to divine status. Given the limited information you currently have, it's difficult to determine the true nature of Zel Cathar or the extent of the threat the cult poses. What would you like to do next? I say to the figure, tell me more about Zel Cathar. Who are they? What will they do if they are awoken from their slumber? And what do you have to gain from waking them? The hooded figure, still frightened, but seemingly resigned to their situation, shares more information about Zel Cathar. Zel Cathar is an ancient being, said to possess unimaginable power and knowledge. The legends we follow claim that Zel Cathar was once a force to be reckoned with, but was eventually sealed away by powerful magic. If awakened, Zel Cathar would reward those who helped restore them to power. Our cult believes that by performing these rituals, we can gain Zel Cathar's favor and share in their power. The exact nature of Zel Cathar's abilities and their attentions upon awakening are not entirely known to us. Our leaders are the ones who have studied the ancient texts and deciphered the rituals. We, the lower ranking members, serve our leaders faithfully, hoping to benefit from the power that Zel Cathar has to offer. With the additional information, you have a better understanding of the cult's goals and motivations, though many questions still remain. I ask, how many of you are there? How large is your organization and who are your leaders? The hooded figure hesitates for a moment before answering your questions. Our organization consists of several dozen members, though not all of them are involved in the rituals or kidnappings. Some serve in more logistical or supportive roles. As for our leaders, there are three of them. They are the ones who discovered the ancient texts and brought us together under the banner of Zel Cathar. Two of our leaders are powerful spellcasters, while the third is a skilled warrior. They keep their identities hidden from most of the low-ranking members, but I've seen them before. They wear masks and ornate robes, making them easily distinguishable from the rest of us. This new information provides you with a clearer picture of the cult's structure and hierarchy. You could use this knowledge to plan your next move. What would you like to do? I ask, where are the rest of your cult located? Do they have a base of operations? Where are the leaders? The hooded figure seems to grow more nervous as you ask about the cult's base of operations and the whereabouts of the leaders. Our main base is located in a hidden subterranean complex, not far from this cave. The leaders reside there along with many other members of the cult. The entrance is well concealed and protected by magical wards to keep unwanted visitors away. I can guide you to the entrance but I must warn you, the cult's defenses are formidable. If you decide to confront our leaders, you will be facing powerful foes. With this revelation, 
you now have a better understanding of the cult's operations and the potential challenges that lie ahead. What would you like to do? I say, thank you. You've been very helpful and informative. How did you come to join this organization? The hooded figure looks down, seemingly ashamed, and begins to explain their reasons for joining the cult. I was lost, searching for a sense of purpose and power in my life. The cult promised me both. They offered me a chance to be part of something greater, and I was drawn in by that allure. I never imagined it would involve such dark deeds. By the time I realized the true nature of the cult, I, I was in too deep, and I didn't know how to escape. I'm not proud of what I've done, and I want to make amends. If you allow me, I'll help you put an end to the cult and their twisted goals. The figure's sincerity seems genuine, but the decision of whether to trust them is ultimately up to you. I ask, what sort of help could you offer? Are you skilled with the blade, or are you a powerful caster? The hooded figure responds, I have some skills in both blade and magic, though I am not as powerful as our leaders. My main strengths lie in the knowledge of the cult's operations, rituals, and defenses. I have some experience with stealth and infiltration, which could be valuable in navigating our hidden base and thwarting the cult's plans. While I may not be the strongest in combat, I believe my knowledge and experience can be of great assistance in putting an end to the cult's activities. The figure's offer of help appears to be genuine, and their skills could be a valuable asset in your mission to stop the cult. What would you like to do? I ask, what would you do with a second chance? If I offered you your freedom, what would you do with your life? The hooded figure seems surprised by the question, but after a moment of reflection, they answer with sincerity. If given a second chance, I would do everything I could to atone for my actions. I would dedicate my life to helping others, using the skills and knowledge I've acquired to prevent others from falling into the same darkness that I did. I would work tirelessly to make amends and rebuild the lives that our cult has destroyed. Perhaps, in time, I could even assist in hunting down and dismantling other dark organizations that prey on the vulnerable. The figure's resolve and determination appear genuine, and the prospect of redemption seems to have ignited a newfound sense of purpose within them. What would you like to do? I tell the figure, that's very noble of you. What is your name? The hooded figure seems relieved by your words and response. My name is Alara. Thank you for giving me a chance to redeem myself. I promise I will do everything in my power to help you put an end to the cult's activities and make amends for my past actions. With Alara's cooperation, you have gained a valuable ally in your quest to stop the cult and uncover the truth about Zel Cathar. What would you like to do? Now that I'm closer to her, what does Alara look like? Is she a human or an elf? Upon closer inspection, you could see that Alara is a half elf. Her features bear the subtle, graceful characteristics of elven heritage, while also displaying human traits. She has long, dark hair and a slender build, and her eyes reveal a mixture of fear, determination, and hope. With Alara's cooperation, you've gained a valuable ally in your quest to stop the cult and uncover the truth about Zel Cathar. I smile and extend my hand out to help Alara off the ground. I ask, are you hurt? Alara accepts your help and rises to her feet, grateful for your kindness. Thank you, she says softly. I'm not hurt, just a bit shaken by everything that has happened. I'm ready to face whatever comes next and assist you in stopping the cult. With Alara's cooperation, you have gained a valuable ally in your quest to dismantle the cult and uncover the truth about Zel Cathar. What would you like to do? I ask Alara, the other cultist outside, what was his role in all of this? Can he be redeemed too, or is he too far gone? So, unfortunately, there was some sort of error with the app that I was using, and I wasn't able to get an answer to that last question that I had sent in. And I find myself really wanting more, and I, I want to know what happens with, with Jaren and Alara. Somehow, a really interesting story was, was beginning to unfold. We went from this quest that seemed like it was probably like a werewolf or something like that i was thinking like maybe it actually lives in the town that's kind of interesting like good for you chat gpt and it was like no there's a cult and i was like okay all right classic D D. 
But the fact that it allowed me to be a little creative and create a distraction and get out without fighting, but then go back and, and get people from the town to, to fight alongside me. And then not even the person who, who I had planned on interrogating, I ended up having a whole conversation with and they're a real person with real stories and, and things that they care about and fleshed out NPC. And now, you know, you, you have the story of, of Alara, who, who is some sort of woman who, who got forced into or tricked into joining this cult, thinking that it would, it would make her life better. And now she's finding out all of the horrible things that are involved in that. But it's too late. She's in too deep. She, she wants a way out, but she doesn't think there is one. Suddenly there's a way out. Now she wants a redemption arc. I could imagine that that if this campaign, if you want to call it that, adventure, whatever it was, if that were to continue, I could see her taking some sort of like paladin oath for redemption or trying to redeem herself and going out and, and just destroying all these these evil cults. And the lore that it created with Zelkathar. Originally I was thinking maybe that's something that exists, maybe that's something that it stole from someone. So I, I don't know, I was thinking maybe it's pulling that from something. And I did a little bit of Google work and I haven't found anything on Zelkathar, so it just created a whole new entity and, and lore behind it. And I thought that was incredible. So here's my take. I really enjoyed playing d d <laughs> if you want to call it that, with ChatGPT. I think it was cool. I think it's worth trying out. And I don't think i know a lot of people have been saying like this is the future and wizards is trying to make a an ai you know that's what dnd beyond is going to be maybe but it's never going to be or at least it's not going to be anytime soon anything like playing with real people at a real table as awesome as this experience was you saw me starting to get really specific with the prompts that I was giving or with the responses that I was giving. The reason for that was I would say one thing and then it would kind of like jump forward in time, like way further than I wanted it to, which is good that it's like keeping things going, but it's something that wouldn't happen at a table. You know, if I start explaining something as a DM or a GM and then you, you're like, whoa, wait, wait a second, wait a second. Before that happens, I would like to do this. Before they leave the village, I would like to stop them or, or anything along those lines. And I'm sure there, there's ways around that, but just as it stands, it's a fun experience. It's not d and It's very enjoyable. It was interesting. I want to know what happens next, and I might try to figure out a way to find out what happens next. I'm sure it's not that difficult. But yeah, I mean, if you've played with AI before, let me know in the comments. Let me know what your opinions are on that. The way I see it, they're going to be our, our robot overlords at some point, so I might as well use them while they still work for us, right? But <laughs> being... It, Realistically, I thought it was fun. I think you should try it out. If you have tried it out, let me know. What do you think happens next for Jaren and, and Alara? Let me know in the comments. And if you're thinking about playing D&D, you don't have to use an AI for it. You can very easily do this yourself. So if you want to learn more about how to play this great game, click on one of those videos because uh, we're going to have two videos, one's for players, one's for DMs. Both are helpful. So thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next time.